Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're working on a basic interpreter. We've done a lot of work on expressions and now we're working on functions. We got through most of the predefined functions and uh, we hit a couple that are multi-argument functions, some of the string functions that weren't in the original basic. Uh, so these are left dollar, right dollar, and mid dollar. And you know, left dollar gets the left characters, right gets the right, mid takes the middle. Um, there's a trick in the mid one. Notice it, it says uh, if J is omitted, it goes to the end of the string. And also it's one based. So um, when you start at the ith character, you're starting from one. Okay. Now uh, we've talked about this before, but interpreters basically resemble compilers in the front end. You feed in a program text, it does some lexical analysis, also called scanning or lexing, and that gives you a stream of tokens, uh, which are sort of like we've, maybe we've identified a number and all the digits of it, we don't have them one at a time. Then we feed that to syntax analysis or parsing, and uh, actually we're applying semantic rules too, like, you know, uh, type matching and stuff, and that produces a tree of nodes. Once you have that tree of nodes, you can interpret it. You take input from the user, do what the node says, take out, put, put it on the screen. Um, you know, the interpreter does all that. A compiler, by contrast, would take the tree of nodes and convert it into a machine code that could run and do the input, output, and whatever. Okay. Um, but what it means is when we add a new feature, we always have to kind of check, do we have all, a token for everything? Do we parse it? And then once we have the tree of nodes, do we know how to handle that node? All right. Uh, so multi-argument functions. Uh, let's see. So we started to write a test. Uh, test left function. OK. Uh, so here we're testing. If you have an empty string and you take the left 10 characters, you should get an empty string and so on. Actually, I think, um, again, I'm going to kind of put these in the order that makes sense from kind of default case to edge cases kind of thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, the, the normal case, you print the left, take the left two characters we show you won't get an error if you have request more than they're existing and um, you can request zero or you can request too many on a regular string. It's okay either way. Um, but when you run this, Oh, uh, Hey Rick. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have a friend in, in the States here who's a total Anglophile, and he's just going insane with how great that is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so, um, well, it didn't blow up, interestingly. Uh, empty string is not equal to AB. Empty string is not equal to ABC. I think we're hard coding an empty result to be frank. Uh, let's find left dollar. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. So the problem is I don't think we get the, the second argument. The number is not coming in. So I think it's just, I don't know if it's defaulting it. I don't know what it gets in that case. Um, let's, let's go back to the lexer. Because I don't think we handle comma yet. I'm surprised there's not an error there. Maybe we do handle comma, and I just didn't remember. Uh, let's see. Find quote comma. Yeah. OK. Why do we not get an error? And let's see what our check program results does. Okay. Oh, we missed a chance here. Okay. Um, let's 
Let's see, we feed this interpreter.run. Okay. We parse the line. Yeah, we're not we're not bringing errors all the way forward, I think. Okay. Um let's let's get the comma token going first and uh deal with that. And the other thing is when we get to this optional argument, we're going to have some some fun with that too. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's find Lexer test so right next door. Um, we should find some operators. It won't be hard to add it. Okay. Yeah. Let's just check token comma. I don't think that exists. Um, Just make another one. Okay, the test should fail. Okay, um, not yet implemented is not equal to comma. Okay, and Lexer, I oh, guess. The list of tokens. Okay. I mean, it's very straightforward at this point to add single character uh, tokens. And it's pretty easy to add reserved words. Should pass. Oh, what do I know? Token error, not yet. Oh, we didn't look for it. Uh, we need to edit here as well. All right, so we add lecture support for comma. I wish it would learn this word. spelling here we go I've corrected lever too many times okay um, I should run all tests but okay I hate to be diverted with this if Well, our interpreter. So I think our parser, let's see, where's parser? Okay, if there are errors, what happens? Error messages. Yeah, so the parser does accumulate error messages. Um, it looks like the interpreter doesn't do anything about that. Okay. Um, let's find run again. Okay, so our loop here, um, we look up the line, we dig out the line number, uh, the, the line of the following line, so we're ready to go to the next line. We parse the line and then we do the steps, but it really should be the case that if there's a syntax error in the parsing, um, we should detect that and stop running. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, in the we have an environment we have this REPL that lets you enter programs we could be running the parser at that point and and check for things there um that wouldn't be a bad thing 
Hmm. I mean, maybe you know every line parses. Um, run. Yeah, I think. It wouldn't be a bad thing if if we parsed it here. And that's pretty common in these old interpreters, I think, that when you type in the program, it kind of it kind of parses it. it. It I think I'm pretty sure it does the tokenizing and like converts reserved words to a single character, like a special character and stuff like that. But maybe maybe that's not right. Maybe maybe the interpreter is the right place. If you parse a line and it fails to parse, I'm pretty sure we should stop there. Um, yeah, I think we should break there. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's do an interpreter test. I didn't really want to want to focus on this this morning, but I think um, we should we should expect uh, we should expect the the proper behavior from this. We don't want to get stuck. So in my in my parser test, I also. Uh, and it did, I also assert that the error messages are empty in the helper. And I can't do that here because we don't capture error messages that way. They show up in the output. Um, but if the output is not what's expected, we would see an error. But we have to put the output there. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's find where we're running one. Just skip. Okay, I think maybe before that. So, um, test syntax error stops interpreter. Okay, so we want to do like, uh, well, program, I guess. Print, and then what kind of obnoxious junk can I put in here that would blow it up? Probably that. I don't think basic is going to use braces anywhere. Okay, so if I parse, uh, let's see. There's step. Um. Yeah, maybe step should be the one that does it. Okay. Uh, we'll feed in the program. I kind of want to do this stuff. Parse, parse dot line. Okay. Um, program. Okay, so program attend print junk parser dot parse program is that a member oh parser dot parse program interpreter Oh, we can give lines of string. Okay. Uh, let's put the program in here too. I think I'm messing this up. 
What are the odds? All right. Where is Ron? Okay. Um, all right. Step feeds a parse. No, I think I think we need to test we need to test run. Okay. So run we're gonna put the program Okay, has to be there to do the interpreter. Okay, so interpreter program program, that part's fine. All right, I think I'm getting there. <laughs> All right, so we got a program. We're gonna tell the interpreter. We're going to say run and um, run only comes back if done is true. Okay, so that's fine. Um, the result of the call, the actual output, and then actual should be something. And I'm just going to say syntax error. And we'll figure out the actual text later. OK, so print junk. Uh, our program is print junk. We try to in we create an interpreter, and then we try and run it. And we should come back with our output being syntax error. All right, it won't be exactly that. I mean, it won't be that at all, probably. It probably just runs a skip, is my guess. OK, uh, failure empty is not equal to syntax error. OK, so um, I think here, Where, what does parser do? I mean, it certainly... Do I have parser? Oh, sorry. problem with the limited refactoring tools here is I just never know if it's going to work or not, but I think it should have. Let me, let me try that again. Extract to variable. Okay, good. Okay, and I don't think I need to be that explicit. All right, so parser equals that, parser.parser. If parser.error messages dot count is greater than zero, then we've got some uh, errors. Okay. Um, Hmm, do I need to do this? Um, parse error conform to range. Hmm. 
It's going to be okay with that. No. Parser conform. Oh. Parser conform sequence. Let's find parser. I, I think I just need to give it a, a two string convertible or whatever they call that. Oh, what is that thing? Print string init. Oh, I can say string of that. Okay. Um, No exact matches in call to initializer. Um, Xcode beta Swift version two. Strings in initializer. City equals string of city. Only works for Swift enums. Okay. Yeah, and you can do this description thing. Ugh. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I don't want to do. Parser. I really just want to print some junky thing. And these are these are errors. Hmm. I'm hoping there's an easier way. Swift three. Oh, string describing self. Okay, well, that's the kind of thing I was hoping for. <laughs> How good it'll be. And again, we, we haven't done a lot of work on making our syntax errors. Like, it'd be nice to say, like, which line number and what column and so on. All right, that built. Let's run this again. And we're really expecting some undefined character or something like that. Yeah. Mostly, I want to make sure that um, well, I don't mind if it it's going to be a skip, but let's um, let's short circuit that as well, and it should have the same message. Okay. Um, all right, so let's maybe put this in R2. So, um, well, Lexer add support for comma, support for comma, and then um, interpreter stop when there's a syntax error. All right, and we really did both these.
Okay. Um, now we've done the lexer. We have to go on and do the parser. Um, so I guess I could say the same thing there. Let's say parser add support for multiple arguments on function call. And that's, that's where the predefined function. So let's find our parser. Okay, predefined function call. All right. There's a way to do this. What did I see? Oh, uh, I saw some Xcode tip. There's a way to kind of focus on this. focus uh, okay <laughs> that's one wasn't quite what I thought but okay some crazy keystroke like smash everything okay um, and if I do it the other way around yeah okay kind of it switched it <laughs> oh please okay I don't know what's going on, but that's what we want to look at. Okay, so we got our predefined function call. We see the word, uh, the function name. We make sure it really is a function. Got a left parent, an expression, and a right parent. Okay, let's go to our grammar. Okay, yay. <laughs> which is down at the bottom. All right, so a factor can be a predefined. We said, oh, you should be able to take comma expression star. Well, this code doesn't reflect that. It just calls the first expression. Okay, so let's define a parser test. Um, still predefines here. Okay, so let's test predefined function call supports multiple arguments. Okay, and let's see, we'll probably have one that's pretty close. That's sort of what we want. Uh, let's do left dollar. Takes a string. And a number. OK, so we print left dollar string s in quotes one close that. Parse has no member predefined. That's kind of a lie. All right, let's just do a build, make sure it's. It's parse or expression. Oh, I need all the print stuff too, then, don't I? Oh, this was check expression. Well, that's probably better to use. Let's use that. Uh, which puts it in a function for us. So we just have to have this, I think. Check expression. Yeah, so we can just give the call. Okay. Predefined function call supports multiple arguments. Left dollar string s, comma one, and left dollar x dollar i. That's good. Okay. We expect to get a predefined function call left dollar and then expression okay and the result type is string we know that this really should be 
a list of expressions. Um, string and number one. String S. Okay. And that does not take a list of things. Okay. So I'm gonna, well, I want to convert this to allow a list of expressions. Ugh. Hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it stepwise. Um, let's rename this. Predefined old. I'm going to add case predefined string expression type. Okay, probably somebody will complain that we don't cover every case somewhere. All right, let's do a build. All right, well, we don't do switches on this. Interesting. Okay. I thought our interpreter would. Oh, build failed. Okay. Switch must be exhausted. Yes, that's the kind of thing I was expecting. Predefined old. Let's define predefined. Let expers, and we'll call expers sub zero. So we're trying to get the old behavior, um, and we're not looking at the type. And then here's another one the type of a predefined uh, predefined should be type return type. Okay. Uh, this may still fail. It, it certainly will because we don't we don't parse numbers like this. Okay. Um, missing right paren. So instead of a right paren, we got a comma and the rest of it falls apart. Okay. But everybody else should be fine. Everybody else calls predefined old. Okay. One failing. All right. So let's, let's take this one out for a minute. And um, now everything should be back to green. Okay. Um, what I want to do then, so I, I'm setting up this kind of parallel situation. And this is, uh, I think of it as like medium-sized refactorings when you have to do this. You, you end up setting up two ways to do something, and then you migrate the old way to the new way. So everybody who uses this, um, we should be able to implement them in, in terms of in terms of this. Okay, so uh, let's let's just do a global search for dot predefined. No reference to predefined. I don't believe you. Um, how about text? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so predefined Oh, wait a minute. Something's really weird. Oh, we have two predefines. Okay. The the lexer has a predefined that's the type of the, the function itself. It knows the name and the type. We don't care about the lexer one. We care about the parser one. Predefined old. Okay. Predefined. to find old. Wait a minute. Okay. If case predefined, return predefined. I, oh, that's, that's the lexer switch. Okay. So we see a predefined function from the lexer. 
using the same name over and over was probably not a, a great move. Okay, but here we've got um, the predefined function call. Well, we could we could return predefined as long as we passed in an array of expressions, right? Because that's what it expects. Okay, and my hope is this passes. does not okay for failing predefined function oh okay yeah we're going to return predefined now with the arguments in an array same thing here And I don't have a way to handle these output variations, unfortunately, because they're just expecting the wrong thing. All right, and this one, predefined with a list. Okay, that one, we exited that out, so it shouldn't count against us. Okay, it should fail, uh, pass, yeah. Okay, so um, we could check in at this point. We're not quite done, but uh, let's see who else uses predefined old. Predefined old. Okay. We're looking at the types. Oh, what was the first one? Oh, that's the definition. Okay. Predefined old here. Again, we're handling it. And then one test, well, this should also be a predefined. Okay, why that one passes? Seems like something's off. Okay. Um, all right, now nobody's referencing predefined old. Uh, we have it in case statements that handle it, but nobody's generating it. Okay, so that should give us some syntax errors, I think two or three places where case statements use it. How about you? Okay, so this is no longer a type. And a failure. Oh, that's a test failure. Okay. Yeah, let's run these again. Interpreter, same thing. We we only call predefined now. Uh because we we deal with that. Okay. And run. Zero failures. It says one failing because that test, this X test did fail at one point, but we can, uh, we could, well, yeah, that test is not there anymore. Okay. So um, we modified predefined to take a list of expressions rather than a single expression. And that, that wasn't too hard. <laughs> okay. Probably could have done it in one, you know, one, one whack, but that's okay. All right. Now we're still going to fail this test because we don't handle, we don't handle the comma. Okay. Um, risk missing right parent is not equal to, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go in parser. Okay, and um, we'll set up 
expressions here. Let expers is type of expression equal an empty list. Okay. And then um, X. Um, Experts dot append try expression. Okay. And then down here, let's return experts. It's not append. Oh, var. Okay, so we're going to accumulate the list of expressions. And right now we've only got the one. Um, and then we'll use it throughout. The same single test should fail, but we're making progress. <laughs> okay, uh, two failures, both right here. All right, now um, we've appended experts, we said there's a, a loop there that we can have um, a while, um, I think we just say token, right? While token equals comma, okay, um, we're going to skip over the comma, and then we're going to say experts.append try expression which handles all the parsing of the expression, okay? And then at the end of that, when we have no commas, then we must be at the end of the arguments, we should have a right parenthesis, okay? And we'll accumulate these things, all right? And uh, again, yeah, this should, this should work now. Okay, so um, we return a list of arguments, all right? Now, our type checking is going to be interesting. Let's let's see our type checking. Okay. Um well that's actually okay. It it runs through all the all the operands which is the expressions. Uh sorry, operands is the types uh, so we had a type specification that says, you know, we expect a list of types. Do these expressions conform to these types? Okay, so uh, walk through the operand types. I mean, if they if they don't have the right number, then that's a problem. Um, each one must match the type, otherwise it's an error. Okay, and that's okay. So I think what that means is... Um, let's uh, predefined function call detects type mismatch with multiple arguments, or maybe it's four. Okay, so if we passed in another string. Um, this should really be check errors. Oops. Check error. Okay. And the result we expect is dot type mismatch. Okay. So if the second argument is a string, you know, it's supposed to be a number, then we get a mismatch. All right. And this should, this should fail. Uh, sorry, this should pass. That we already do that in the type checking. And we may have another test case for that. I don't know. Okay, apparently. Oh, I got to put the whole program. Okay. And print. Okay, good. 
All right, so at this point, our parser is happy to take multiple arguments, puts them in. We've got the expressions list, so we can return them. We don't evaluate them yet. All right, so let's check in the parser. Um, handles multiple arguments, predefined call. All right. And then uh, the next place we're going to do this is we're going to handle it in the interpreter. You can see right now we just hard code X per sub zero. And uh, that's not going to make it for what we're doing. So I think our call predefined function is going to need to accommodate a list of expressions. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it gets a list of operands. Okay, so uh, let's take a break uh, about three minutes and we'll come back and implement this thing. Hey, welcome back. All right, so uh, we've got this predefined function call. It takes one expression. We really wish it were a list of expressions. It's file private, so I'm pretty sure I can just fix this in place here. And I'm just gonna do a quick refactoring to let uh, a different argument come in. And I'm gonna call it experts. So I can just say let expert equals experts sub zero. I don't know if I have to bang on there. Nope, okay. Um, and then there's gonna be some call sites that need some work, right? Well, we took expert sub zero, let's take that off. Pass in the list of expressions. Anybody else? I think we're good. All right, so this is kind of a little prefactoring. I've heard it called prefactoring, nesting, preparatory refactoring. Um, but we did something that we knew would be helpful in implementing it, but we just were able to stay green the whole time doing that. So uh, we made predefined function call take a list of expressions. Okay. Notice, I mean, we're still we're still only treating experts sub zero is the interesting thing here, but uh, that um, yeah, that line there, we have to somehow walk through all the arguments to get this thing working. So uh, I think we are ready for our interpreter tests again. And where's that X test? <laughs> Find X. Oh, huh. find x test. There we go. Here's our left function. Okay. Um, I don't know if left is implemented or not, but we'll see if the test passes. No, okay. Um, yeah, so here's the problem. Uh, it's a string number to string, so uh, it tries to access arg sub 1, but we only passed in arg sub 0 here. All right, so that's actually good in a way because of, uh, let's print function. I don't know if we can see that it's the left dollar, but um, Uh, Swift string float to string. Yeah, we can't really see which one it is, but we we kind of know. <laughs> okay, so here, um, expert sub zero. Well, what I really want is I want a list of operands. So I'm going to take experts and I'm going to map each expression to evaluate th that in the store. Okay, so I'm just getting a list of, I'm turning my list of expressions into a list of values. And this is $0. Okay. Um, and we'll make that be operands. Um, is that a good word? Arguments? 
equals expressions map to evaluate this store and then arguments here. Okay, so we apply our function to the whole list of arguments. All right, and we didn't use the word arguments before, so that should be fine. And run this test one more time. Probably more than one, but <laughs> at least one more. Okay. <sighs> We're getting there. AB is not equal to AB. Oh, well, yeah, I left out my new lines. I would have thought this would get a new line. Okay, so the print statement... Um, in the long run, we're going to support that if the last thing is a semicolon, it uh, does not print a new line. But that's a that's another feature for down the road. All right. Uh, that is good. Left function works. All right. Let's do right function, which I imagine is going to be kind of similar. Um... The right function, right dollar, right dollar. Okay, the right two characters are not A, B, but B, C. Uh, the right of an empty string is going to be empty. Uh, pulling nothing from the right should give you nothing. And pulling everything should give you the whole string. All right. I don't know if we have a right dollar in our list. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh dear. Um. What happened there? I bet it didn't run. We've seen this before. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh. Not good when you can't trust it. Okay, so we saw log, but we did not see right dollar. Okay, right dollar, well, it goes after log. My alphabet here. Right dollar. is value dot function and uh, it's also a function string number to string function string not string number to string and it's going to take an, a closure okay so um, well, we basically expect the same thing. We're going to produce a string. Sorry, let's get this tagged in a little. Okay, we're going to take a string. We'll take the original string they gave us. I imagine there's a suffix if there's a prefix, right? And convert our argument to an int. And a separator on the end. Okay. Um, yeah, I expect that to work. It's nice when they're easy. <laughs> okay, it does work. All right. Um, support left dollar and right dollar. Okay, and then the last one, <laughs> this mid dollar. Okay, um, this one... Yeah, this is the one I had to kind of mentally work on a little. Um, the last argument is optional. So we're going to have to deal with that. And it's going to it's gonna complicate things. So we said this was a function. I think in our scanner we said it's string number number to string. But it's really string number optional number to string. And, and the system has to kind of say oh if a j is omitted you know i'm going to treat it as 
as if you type some arbitrarily large number. Um, now, I don't want to support var args because there's just no there's no precedent for that in any of this. It, it it could be there, but I think what we'll do, at least what what I had in mind was something like instead of saying that third argument is a number, what if we could call it an optional number? Um, that extends our type system a little bit. And it means our type matcher has to say, hey, if if the argument count is wrong, excuse me, um, like append a none or something. So we'll have to we'll have to kind of allow for a none value. Um, in, in our value objects. All right. Um, so when you when you do the step we just did uh, in the interpreter, the call predefined, which is down here somewhere, call predefined. Okay, smash everything. Ha, huh, didn't work. No, didn't work. <laughs> okay, what is the focus again? Editor focus. Control, oh, control shift. Oh, it wasn't option, it was shift. Control shift command enter. Okay. <laughs> um, did it, where did it leave me? Do a sign. Call predefined. Okay. That's that's not bad there. I mean that's that's really good. I, I feel like this should be the same. An expression I think this none type, we're gonna have to say it's compatible with certain function types. Hmm. So if you evaluate a missing argument, okay, we don't define evaluate for that. Right. Okay. Evaluate an expression and produce a value. Okay. So I think, I think I'm going to do this strategy from the, kind of backwards um i'm gonna say hey what if what if values could be missing and or or none or something like that so we we have to distinguish the expression and the value um All right. Yeah, this is where going backwards may not be right because I'm saying there's a missing value and most people should not care. You can't really add it or anything, so I don't think any operators are going to care about that. Um All right, let's go to value. Okay. I'm going to say there's a missing case, a, a, a missing value. And we may want to say none, undefined. Maybe undefined. Okay. Uh, some, some people should complain because we don't, our switch statements don't handle everything. All right. So let's go to test in there for value. Okay, interpreter must be exhaustive. And same thing for format. Okay, uh, let's find our, um, where's value? Here, 
Okay, I thought we had some tests on value. Um, interpreter value. And this is even worse because it's all implicit. Um, maybe that's okay. Nobody's testing it directly. These functions there okay equals a string apply yeah i think i think we don't care here so let's see undefined who's gonna care i guess the interpreter all right so does anybody test this i think they do no <laughs> Oh, we tested it implicitly. That's right. Um, let's let's do a test there. So, interpreter test. Um, Hmm, we can't make one like that, so we're just going to have to make one. Um, an expression is just dot missing. Oh no, this is really different. Hmm, we can't really test that yet because expression doesn't support it. <laughs> Um, okay, let's put it in the case. Undefined, return, undefined. It's kind of a can't happen. I don't think you could ever print it. It only shows up in a call. Um, and there's one more. Boolean to float. Case function, user function. I'm going to say the same thing down here. Undefined. Okay. I, I think all our tests should be passing. Okay. Value done. Undefined. Undefined. Okay. Now, um, let's, where's our type? <laughs> that thing. All right. So type, um, Right, yeah, we, we know we're going to support arrays at some point. Um, we have I want to say optional is another possibility. And optional would wrap another type, okay, because it's this indirect enum says it can be recursive. Which makes these enums really, you know, very powerful. Um, so, I want I want to say that my argument could be number optional number, and then my type checking and all that's going to have to deal with it. So, let's see. Is this a parser issue? Yeah, I think it is a parser issue. So, 
Um, let's start in on mid dollar funk test. Um, this is a test that um, mid works with three arguments. Let's test this simple case first. Okay, so, um, well, no, it's really a check, check expression. Okay, so if mid were required uh, to, if it required three arguments consistently, then I think um, we would be in good shape here. Dot number two, I'm missing a comma. Okay, so mid dollar S one two, well, make it str. Um, that should all work, I think, uh, assuming we have mid defined, but I'm pretty sure we do. I believe our lexer, we got everything we thought we wanted. Mid dollar, okay, SNN to S. Um, and this should pass. We don't know how to interpret it yet, but it should, it should form it correctly. Okay, and now we're gonna get fancy. And this is the part that's not gonna work. Okay, this is the reason we're gonna not pro probably not gonna get to a raise till tomorrow. Um, so if this is omitted, what should it be? I want to say this should be a missing. Let's jump to definition. Okay, expressions. Yeah, I want to say there could be a missing expression. Okay, and I want to say that we will detect that it has three it should have three arguments and we will say no this one is explicitly missing okay which doesn't even exist yet we we didn't uh, define it okay so there's another case up here to make this build and probably some complaints switch must be exhaustive yeah um number the type I don't know. My, I feel like I'm shoving it in so many places. Is this is this going right? Well, the type is missing. So this is getting from the expression type to the type of the actual value. All right, let's say it's case missing. And I think the problem is it's gonna bubble in and multiple places may have to may have to wake up. Okay, so this one, if we have case missing, a missing expression is of type missing. Okay, we're missing as a type. I don't know. It, missing is missing numbers number string is string like okay are you adding any information all right uh case missing default value um missing we have to do something let's let's return something weird string missing value for now eventually we'll get the the missing thing okay this one 
evaluate. Um, Okay, min works with two arguments. Oh, I did it wrong. Mid works with three arguments, string one, two, gets string one, two. Mid works with two arguments, string one, two, she gets string one missing. All right. I don't know if it's going to pass. <laughs> I made too many changes there. I think we got everything in place for this piece. Oh, it can't pass. We don't, we don't return missing in our... Um, our type checking knows nothing about it and all that. No. Oh, come on. Do you really work? Okay. Let's see check expression. Um, that's really parsing an expression. So let's go down to our parser. Undefined. A user defined. Okay. Here's this. Oh, we did add. No, we didn't. Okay. Required left paren, missing paren. Okay. Token equals comma. Oh, I didn't take this off. Okay. Two arguments. Let's only pass two arguments. All right. I feel better. <laughs> okay. Um, we got an argument count mismatch. All right. From our type checker. All right. Now, um, yeah, so here's argument count mismatch. It looks and says, you told me the type of this was string number number to string, meaning I should have three expressions here. You only gave me two. All right. Now, This is where I'm not so sure. Okay, so I can't enforce that. I guess if my operands, sorry, if my expressions is is greater than the count, I definitely have an error, right? I've passed four arguments to a three argument function. Okay, so let's let's take this case separately. If expressions count is greater than operands count. I, I think I'm gonna say parameters here. Oh, did I call it that down there? Not quite. Uh, rename. Okay, I've got parameters and expressions. Okay, if my express if I have more expressions than I have parameters, clearly I've got an error. Okay, um, now Hmm. I want to do something to substitute in missing for any missing arguments. Okay, so my parameters say there should be three. If if the parameter type, okay, the problem is this this 
uh, sorry, expers index dot that, <laughs> right? If the expression count is less than the parameters, then we we um, we have a missing argument. And I want to say missing at that point. Okay, so let's say. Um, I got parameters. This this maybe is arguments. If I draw that distinction, right? The parameters are what you define. The arguments are what you pass in. I I know it, I'm just kind of tweaking, but I I feel like I want to get these names right to make the the thing right. Okay, so if I have more arguments than I have parameters, there's a problem. If I have the same, there's no problem. If I have less, this blows up. Okay, so I want to say let argument equal argument sub index. Is it like this? Else missing. Okay, and this is argument. non-optional expression. Okay, so I guess if Okay, index Greater than or equal to arguments count um, than missing, else arguments some index. Is that, does that work? Okay, if the index is greater than or equal to arguments dot count then we can't access arguments of count. So that's that saying we want a missing one and a parameter. Okay. I think uh, we'll still fail. Everything else should pass. Three failures. This is only two. Okay. Where's the other one? Predefined function enforces number of arguments. Right. Because that's a required one. Yeah, so the problem is parameter type not equal argument type is not really the right uh, thing. It's, it's really... Um, Let me edit this parameter type equals argument type. Okay, I think it helps to pull this out. So if the parameter type is not equal, if not, the parameter type is equal to the argument type. Okay, but we don't care about equals, we care about compatibility. Um, so let's extract this to a method and say is compatible, compatible parameter type argument type okay and I can take the parens off the outside I lost a dite type somewhere didn't I okay um, can I show change That didn't help. Ah, oops. Okay. Expected type expression. I changed it too late. <laughs> Arguments. Type check. Is compatible. 
I don't want an expression type. I want an argument type. Yeah, I thought that should be this as well. Okay. All right, I think, okay, something, oh, here's the argument dot type. Okay, good. And this really is argument type. Okay, is compatible parameter type and argument type, oops. Returns a bool. Okay. You are compatible if you're equal, is what we've said till now. Um, okay. Let's start over. Type check. If, the, if there are too many arguments, it's an argument count mismatch. If, if, there are, if there are the same number of arguments, then we're just going to compare each parameter, uh, parameter type. to the corresponding argument type. Okay. And if there are fewer arguments than parameters, we will end up with a dot missing and we'll still compare its type. Okay. Uh, check it for compatibility. Okay. Um, again, I think we'll see the same failures. Okay, man, he works with two arguments. Yeah, there's some. Did we set a breakpoint? Maybe I bumped it. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So, I don't know. This is... I don't know if this is the right place to do this. There's sort of a, there's a thing that's like a zip on lists that puts two lists together and matches up their arguments, which we kind of want to do. But um, they need the same number of arguments. And I don't know if I can... I just don't remember the the features enough. There should be some way I can append as many missings as you need to my list of parameters and then and then zip through them. But I guess that's a refactoring we'll we'll save. Okay. I think we're at the real point that says we want left dollar to fail if you leave off the second argument cuz left dollar requires this argument. We want mid dollar to succeed if you leave off its last argument because it's optional. All right, so now I'm going to make I'm going to make an optional. Um so in type um again, I think I want to say a type may allow for optional, uh, we'll say opt, optional types. Okay. And then this function SNN is really optional N, and the type here is optional number. No, I can't just type that there, can I? This is only used for that one function, so I'm comfortable renaming it. S N optional N to S. Okay. Um, now we're using that there. Let's go to our parser. 
and let's check this. Okay. Um, if the parameter type is equal to the argument type, there's no problem. Okay. Um, if the parameter type is optional, Hmm. Yeah, let's deal with optional. If the parameter type, uh, if case dot optional, let um, inner equal parameter type. Okay. So if if we said it was optional and um, the argument type matches the inner type, if inner dot type um, equals argument type, return true okay so if if we say it must be a number and you have a number you're fine if if you said it could be an optional number and your inner type number matches your actual type our uh, argument type number equals number um, inner dot inner is a type. Um, if the, the inner type if the inner type does equal the argument type, you're fine. If um, if it's optional and you're missing, you're fine and if um, if it's a non-optional type well if nothing else has happened you're not fine okay all right so if you if you match directly number equals number you're fine if we said optional number and you're passing in a number to the inner type matches that's fine if you're passing in a string well then it's going to fall down to the false. If you said optional and you have no inner type, I mean, sorry, your miss your argument type is missing, then you return true that it's compatible. So you said optional and you're missing, that's fine. Um, all right, I think we got it. <laughs> so Okay, what's missing? Switch must be exhaustive. Add missing cases. Oh, optional, yeah. Um, hmm. This is an interpreter, so we'll just return junk for now. But I think we may be able to do better. But let's make sure our parsing is happy first. And I believe all should pass. I should probably say more confidently, but it was a bigger step. Okay, what happened? Um, where are we? Exit test case. Test. 
Right. Print with addition. Print with addition. Bad access. Hmm. Okay. X we're one plus two plus three. A clean build folder. A bunch of things passed. But this one has an issue. Print, expression, make. The print should be happy with that. All right, try this again. failures are. Is it? No. This one. Argument count mismatch. No, it should be a tight mismatch now. Yes. Okay. That. Okay, but the other one. Mid dollar string number string. Okay, what's going on? Oh, we do it in the type check, but we don't really put the argument there. Oh. Um, let's see, go down here again. Use a defined function call. Type check. Right, but we, we won't say we've only pulled two expressions. Whoops, that's not the right one. System defined. Okay, yeah, so if, if we only have two arguments um, the type checking is filling it in but the predefined doesn't have that extra argument so maybe this should accommodate that here and then we can simplify down here yes I think that would be better okay um, We need to know how many arguments this thing expects. Uh, function let operand types. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can do it from that. Whoops. After. Okay. So I'm going to add in missing for any arguments. Um, we have the list of operand types. I'm going to change that to parameter types to be consistent with the other. Okay, so we, we know the list of parameter types. We know how many expressions we have. Um, while experts.count is less than parameter types.count, we're going to append a missing. Okay. And 
Yeah. So we we pull as many arguments as there are. If we have too few arguments, at this point, when we exit this loop, we have experts.count. Well, if it was greater than, we don't go in here. Um, so we know experts.count is greater than or equal to parameters dot count okay so if it if it had so too many commas then we would um we would already be greater than the parameter count okay if we don't have enough to equal the parameter count we're gonna we're gonna append them until we do and then we'll come in here so i think this will work but i think we can improve it okay and again the problem was we faked them in the type check but we didn't put them in the actual parameters yeah okay so let's let's take the stuff in the type check out that was faking it and um then okay i'm going to move this one down uh, down here okay all right so now arguments.count greater than parameters.count well we got a parse error if um otherwise the arguments equals we we know that argument sub index is valid for every one of the parameters now so we don't need to do this stuff we can just say argument sub index and trust that it's right so argument will be equal to argument dot index so i'll put this back this way and take this out Okay, if the count's too high, throw the error. Again, I'm gonna try and get good at this. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's it's a little better. If the count's too high, throw an error. Otherwise, walk through each parameter and check that the parameter type is compatible with the argument type. Otherwise, it's an error. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I don't know if I have a zip or not. Let's try. Um, Parameters.zip. Let's see. I guess I'll search. <laughs> There's also zip that's, yeah. Uh, zip to sequence. That's kind of promising. There's zip like compress. This is not that. Yeah. Okay. Zip. Okay, so you zip words and numbers. Now you get a pair of a word and a number for each. That's the kind of thing I want. All right, because I know they're they're safe. So if I do a zip parameters with um, arguments dot for each okay um yeah i'll get there um well this is parameter argument in all right so for each pair of parameter argument we're going to do this No, I don't have to do arguments of I and all that. Okay. Uh, how about argument dot type parameter? Type. And I, I don't know, I keep <laughs> twisting around these names. This is really parameter, parameter types. Uh, 
and I want to switch. Okay. Let's make sure I'm happy first. <laughs> Zip parameter types with the arguments. Okay. For each one in the pair, if, if it's not compat, if the parameter type isn't compatible with the argument type, then there's a parse error mismatch. Okay. Uh, yeah, try. All right. And I think that should pass all tests. Let me close this one second. Excuse me, one second. Okay, uh, let's see. So that was happy. Let's let's flip this. If the parameter types is less than the arguments. Trying to get parameter types first consistently. Um, if if you have fewer parameters than arguments, then there's just flat out a mismatch and and return the error. Okay, and if they're the same, they won't be they won't be greater because we made sure the lists come up the same. So uh, zip them together, check the parameter with corresponding argument, and that's cool. All right, I don't know, I love this little zip thing. You can zip a sequence to itself or to the, the rest of itself, like skip the first element. Um, very, very cute. All right. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Well, I was gonna get a shower. So. Okay. Um, oh, a little noise. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is good. So we've got our optional arguments. Um, add parser support for optional arguments and um, make mid dollar use that. Okay, and we still haven't interpreted, and that's going to get trickier. All right. Ah, that's a good place to be, though. <laughs> I was a little worried that it would take longer. But um, I think we're okay. So let me close those tests. Um, we still have a lot of places. Um, we still have a number of places where the interpreter, we hard-coded weird strings. Um, sorry, parse. I don't know. I got all these. It just likes to open stuff in the, the tab set that it chooses instead of just saying, oh, you got it there already. I don't know why. <sighs> yeah, just. Okay. All right. Um, so mid dollar parse is correctly. Let's see if it interprets correctly. And I think, did we write the tests? I don't think we did. Mid dollar. Nope. Okay. Um, Test mid dollar function, and we'll just steal some of this to get a structure. Okay, mid. And close. Okay, so mid dollar. Um, all right, mid dollar. Given a subset of string x starting at the ith character. for j characters if j is omitted go to the end of the string okay so if we if we start at position two and we collect one character uh, let's let's collect three off of a b c d e okay uh, we expect the middle three characters because B is position two, A is one, B is two, collect three characters, B, C, D, and we get that. Okay. Um, if J is omitted, goes to the end of the string. Okay. 
Um, let's get another example here. If you ask for anything on an empty string, even character one, two characters, we expect to get empty. Okay. Um, if you ask for nothing, um, start at position two, but collect zero characters. That's the count, right? Yep. Okay. We expect that. So, um, with three arguments. All right. Let's let's get that way working first, and then we'll worry about that extra case. All righty. Um, interpreter. We must have defined mid. We did not. Oh, this is really annoying. I think it didn't run our test again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Xcode. Mid. All right. So mid dollar. And this I don't this is a little more complicated okay well let's value dot function f n no s n n to s of something Okay. Um, and comma. Closure takes three arguments. Okay, so this is um, right. Let's we want to say string. Um, I don't know if we have a, let's see if we have a string function for this already. S dot mid dot substring to from within, within range. Please use slicing subscript with a partial range up to string slicing subscript. Okay, so I think what they're saying is if we take our first argument is the string and we want to take dollar one is our position. I think we're going to have an off by one. Um, let's see. Whoops. That's old. I guess I ran it at some point. Uh oh. <laughs> Swift uh, string subrange. Range in a string, yeah. So start to end. They haven't used indexes. Uh. Yeah. Here 
Everything has to be an index. <laughs> index from to with range. Okay. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we got to do. <laughs> I can't say I love it. All right. Um, so index is from R dot lower bound. Where R is a range. Okay. Well, it's it's from dollar zero. I think it's plus one. We'll see if I'm off by one. <laughs> okay. The index, end index is dollar zero plus dollar one. Uh, sorry, this is one plus dollar two. This is dollar one plus one. Okay, so if, can I convert float? Okay. Binary operator plus cannot be applied to two integer operands. What? <laughs> okay, let me do a build. Missing error parameter. Um, this is just. No exact matches in call to subscript. Zero. Binary operand plus. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> Three plus four. That should be okay. Now this one complains less, okay. Maybe I'm missing this. Uh, this seems off. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I don't understand why this is complaining. Sorry, let's look at index from again. Is that maybe their example from? It's just index from lower bound off a range of ints. Okay. Um, index of unsafe characters. And an ant. It, we're not getting the right index function here somehow. Is it string dot index? Okay, I don't like this answer. <laughs> Let's try again. String Swift subrange. 
maybe maybe I should have just tried it the way I was doing before. So let's try return string dollar zero from int of dollar one dot dot less. Now let's see if it complains about this first okay so we yeah subscript is unavailable cannot subscript with use a string index range instead Start index is the first character. Yeah, I don't. Uh, it definitely made it hard. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't add to these, I guess. String of start index. All right. Let's let's. The type of this is string index? Yes. Can jump there. Okay. Jump there. Index is just nothing. Okay, let's let's see if we can find Apple documentation on this. so hard to get this stuff okay I'm gonna try a different way <laughs> all right um, this is really the left dollar takes the prefix of these things we want the suffix so we want the right dollar Okay, um, let length equal dollar zero dot count. Uh, let's call it count. Okay, um, let write string equal dollar zero dot.
suffix. So I went through the count minus the left side. Suffix from no um. let's try and dollar one. He's not an index. Uh, suffix. Okay, if my string is three, <laughs> can't believe I'm doing this. Um, and my left side is one. I want the two. String stuff is such a pain. Invalid redeclaration of no prefix conduces a type string. What does this produce? Didn't we use that right up here? String dollar zero dot. Well, I want right string dot. Prefix of int dollar two. No prefix. What was this here? Sorry. Right dollar. Left is dollar zero dot prefix. Let's make a string out of this. I don't get it. This was a string prefix int dollar one. String prefix string dot prefix. Oh, same problem. What is that? And I don't even know if they're right stuff is coming back at this point all right let's run a test <laughs> these suffix have negative length um let's count zero
that's an artifact. Okay. Ah, oh dear. CDE is not equal to BCD. Okay, so what have we done? Um, we said start at position two. So I think this count, oh golly. We've gone too far. So um, my index should be zero based, and I'm using a one. Okay, so ABCD gets BCD. Um, wowzers. Okay, let's mid with three arguments. Mm, should be mid dollar. Okay, does this make sense? Int one minus one, we translate from one base to zero based. The count minus that gives us the index of the starting position in here. So if we said 2, it says 1, which is it helps to count the gaps. So start at the first gap and select three characters. OK. Um, We have one that asks for more than we have. Yes, we have this one. So the prefix is okay grabbing more characters than you want. If if the length field was too big, um, then we get the max. Okay, so we we don't let the we don't let the starting index go below zero because if we try to back up here, back up two characters on the empty string, we're we're in negative territory. Okay, so that forces that. This one ABC two zero. Okay, all right. Um, now, ugh. So the place. The the issue I have though is this FS in, to an N, um, it says in the, well, it says give me a function in the Swift domain, okay, floats and strings, and I will translate it. All right, but the problem is some, now, uh, well, let me write the next test, okay. The problem is the next test is going to struggle, okay. Um, test mid function with two arguments. All right. And the documentation says if J is omitted, it goes to the end of the string. Okay. So we can default it to count. But how do we tell if it's omitted? Okay. So if we did this, starting at two, it should be BCDE. And if you select one, it shouldn't be a problem. And if you uh, select two, I don't think that's a different case. OK, so uh, an index that's out of range, we don't want to blow up. And index that's in range, we just want to fetch the rest of the thing. OK, and this, I think, will fail. I don't have a great solution. I have an idea, but um, my idea is 
we create our own function that takes Swift domain objects. Okay, can't take a prefix of a negative length. Dollar two is minus one. Now, is that coming from the missing argument thing? Interpreter. Let's look for missing. Um, let's try value dot number minus nine. No, we want value. Undefined. Okay, and who uses undefined here? Function value, undefined function, undefined return undefined. Oh, whoops. Return number zero. Bull to float. Okay, we don't care about bull to float. Um, where's that minus one coming from? <laughs> All right. Right string BCDE. Well, that's doing good. Okay. Um, I don't know whether to kind of tweak it in or find a more general solution. Okay. Um, who is calling this? Let's get back to print. How about apply? Okay, the arguments missing and evaluate. Okay, let's find that. Right. Oh, let's change this to text. Yeah, we knew somebody did that. Okay, missing. Um. So I think we must have passed a string back and it got interpreted as a number and turned into a minus one. I mean, we could, I think what we could do is value.number and then is there an int max? Int max, something like that. Um, think that would default it the right way. Okay. Okay. Um, now I got to decide if I want to let this go or not. Okay, um, the reason this works is because we have one case that uses missing and that's this mid dollar function and it loves a big number. So it says, I'll just take the whole rest of the string and then it only needs the, you know, the four characters that are there. Um, what I think should happen, and I think we're now in a position to do it, um, this function value.function, right? It it wants a function from values to values. So let's let's do that. Okay, so I'm saying missing evaluate missing should be missing. I don't I don't think there's a a change that should happen. We'll see. This is missing is an expression should turn into undefined value. Where's value? Um, undefined is what really should be going on. Okay, so 
if we take this, um, I'm going to take that function and pull it out. Okay, so value dot function of mid dollar is this horrible expression. Can I extract this method? Oh god. Um. I'm gonna call it mid function. Mid function does something, returns something. Is that gonna work? Can I convert return to? Well, yeah, that is probably what we want. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Cannot convert return value of type value of value to. to I want to do this. Well, it's a harder function to write. It's why I'm resisting. And maybe maybe this interior piece, let's see if we can extract that. Yes. Okay. Um mid dollar. Okay. I'm just trying to get these pieces together. All right. So mid dollar is uh, dollar zero should be a string um, a string a start and an end of int okay if you had that and you had this function that took string and string and one is start which is already an int and two is end Um, which is actually length. <laughs> okay, so somehow, oh, I guess I did fix. Oh, you didn't guess for me. Okay, string. String. Okay. So th this is the natural function in Swift, I think. It's to say, we want to write this mid-dollar function. You give me the string, you give me the starch, you give me the length, and I will do the right thing. Okay, now this, I don't think we need this. I think we got to decode everything and do the right thing. Okay, so... I think here, this function, values to value goes to value, that's the kind of function we want up here. Mid dollar. Okay, so I think, I think this thing should be value dot function of mid function. Okay, and this I'll comment out. Let's see if I get it right. And then I'm going to put a comma up here. Okay. Can I convert value of value to value? Value to, value to oh. Can I convert value? I think I want mid function. Should be just values. Um, arguments of type array of value and produces a value. 
Okay. I think I'm getting there. Cannot use instance method. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's pull these up. <laughs> They aren't really anything to do with our interpreter, so yeah, they don't really belong there anyway. Okay, mid dollar is the direct analog. This thing, arguments demand value. Right, we need our parameters. Okay, so so mid function, it it knows it's given values, so it knows the first value must be a string. Um, the second must be an integer, and the third is either missing or an integer. Okay, so um, let's say let let string equal val uh, arguments sub zero dot as string, right? That we know. All right, so mid dollar takes a string. And it takes something else. All right, the second argument, we know that must be numeric. Uh, start equals well, we want to make an integer. Arguments sub one dot as float. Okay. And pass this. And then the third argument, let uh, length equal, well, if, if value of one, let's do it this way. Um, let's default it to string.count and then um, okay if arguments sub 2 is not um, not equal undefined then uh, we'll say length equals arguments to dot s float um, and that Okay, so I think um, cannot convert. Okay, so this then we have to wrap the result type. Okay, and that's value dot string of all that. Okay, so if if we can get we we pull out the arguments we we have a string we have a float the third argument we're going to default it to what we want for undefined which is string dot count so pull the whole string if you can and then if it's if it's not undefined then it must be an actual float so arguments sub two as float will work all right this should fail because we don't we don't set this value to undefined. And um, yeah, here, this should be undefined. Okay, dot undefined. All right, and for the big finish, <laughs> please just work. Oh, okay, what has happened? DE is not equal to BCDE. Um, Oh, I have to pick this up tomorrow. Let's see. Can we, is it, is it obvious? <laughs> okay. The length, let's make sure I got these parameters right. J characters, so that's the length we want. 
Okay, we appear to have messed up our start position. Start position is two. Okay, let's let's break here and run this. Let's look at the arguments. A, B, C, D, E. Oh, where's that int max coming from? Are we not calling this thing? Yes, okay, missing should be undefined. As well, if you evaluate something and it's missing, we're gonna turn it into a value as the undefined value. All right, let's try again. May extend this for two minutes here, test navigator. Continue. Oh, can't take prefix of negative length. Okay, it's clearly not going to fix itself in two seconds. Um, where the length is coming from negative, I don't know. Minus one. Okay, so we'll pick up there tomorrow. I'm very sure we'll figure this out, um, hopefully in the first 10 minutes. And uh, then we'll move on to substr. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, what would you call it? Subscripts. Okay, so we'll go to arrays and vectors and stuff like that, and uh, get that in our expressions. And uh, hopefully tomorrow it may take a little more. We got to do um, assignments with them and and fetching values with them and dimensioning arrays. So eh, it sounds like it's going to be two sessions for us. But anyway, I think we'll finish the mid-dollar stuff and move on to that pretty quickly tomorrow. Tomorrow, um, I have something that goes till nine uh, my time. Uh, so I may be five minutes late or something, but uh, it should be the normal-ish time, which is uh, 10 to 12.30, uh, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, 3 to 5.30 p.m. UTC. And uh, thanks for joining me today. I hope I catch you in the future. Take care. Bye-bye.